On a summer afternoon, you ever have one of those days where you just want something like crisp and refreshing, but mead might be a little too high of an alcohol and beer just really wasn't cutting it? I got your answer. Rosemary Hydromel. This is probably going to be one of the simplest meads we've ever made. It's also going to be probably one of the lower alcohol meads we've ever made. Don't let that scare you. This is a great process and rosemary is a lovely thing. I've been meaning to make a rosemary mead forever, but I thought it was just a little too simplistic. So I made it more complicated, but it's not really complicated at all. It's actually just going to be a fairly simple, low ABV cider type mead, hydromel mead, that will be carbonated. Really super simple. So um, to get started with this, all you really need is a one gallon fermenter, some rosemary we're using fresh from our garden. No, we didn't wash it. We didn't rinse it. We haven't done anything to it. And you know what? I am okay with that. The fermentation process will kill off anything that's on it. And there's probably yeast on here that we can use. Who knows if there's enough in the honey? I don't. Do you? So we're going to get it from both sources and let them fight it out. In other words, this is a wild ferment. Absolutely. That's what makes this even simpler and a little bit more fun. We are going to be using uh, Sweet Squeeze wildflower honey today, and I'm only going to use one and a half pounds, which you might go, why? Well, because that comes to about a 1.050 gravity in a one gallon, which is roughly what you want for like a beer or something. So let's get to it, shall we? And I'm going to use one and a half pounds, which is, oh, 454 times one and a half is like, so. it'll be in the bottom, the metric. And one gallon is 3.785 liters for all of our metric friends, just so you're aware. I know you guys do like five liter containers and stuff. I don't have those, so we're using a one gallon. Uh, but here we go, pound and a half of honey. One and a half pounds of honey added. Now, what I wanna do is, just because somebody's gonna ask and I don't actually know how much this stuff weighs, I wanna weigh our rosemary. Okay, it's about 0.4 ounces, which is like 12 grams. So not a lot. Now this is stems, leaves, twigs, the whole deal. Derek just went outside, cut off four pieces about, you know, yay long, and that's it. I'm not putting them in quite yet. Normally I would use our tap water, but I say tap water with little quotes around it because ours is actually filtered. Chlorine and sediment has been removed as well as some other contaminants that we might not like. So our tap water tastes good. Use water that tastes good to you. Bottled water is probably the best thing you can use, but I'm frugal and refuse to buy gallons of bottled water just to brew with. So I use good quality tap water. We've never noticed a problem. Now, I would also normally have it at room temperature or the temperature comes out. I let this be a little bit warmer today. It's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The Celsius will be right here. Why did I do that? Well, we're using a wild yeast. I want to make them feel all warm and cuddly and get them active as soon as possible. So by using a warmer water, that will instigate them into fermenting a little bit more quickly. It also helps the honey break down just a little bit easier. How much water am I using? That much. I'm gonna fill the jug when it's done, that's it. But for now, I'm only gonna put about halfway, like that. I'm gonna get my spoon of unusual size and mix it up. This way, it's a lot easier and I don't spill and I can get some oxygen mixed in there. In the very beginning stages, you want some oxygen in there so that the yeast can you know, go forth and multiply, if you get what I mean. But after that, once the actual alcohol making phase starts, you want to make sure they don't have as much oxygen. So I will swirl these and things for the first few days, but after that, not so much. Got a little foaming action going on in there. All right. That looks stirred into me. Don't go too far with this. I'm going to need it again. But at this point, I am going to throw these in here because they take up a little bit of space. I don't want to go overboard. So in they go. Complicated, right? More water. But now that everything's mixed, I don't have to be so aggressive with it. But see, I just went to the shoulders there. That's about as far as I, well, I'll be a little bit greedy. Just like that. That's it. Don't go any further. Now let me have back the spoon of unusual size, please. At this point, I do want to stir it a bit more, and I really just want to get those rosemary things to not float, okay? 
Ideally, you want them submerged. If they're not fully, it's okay. They will float a bit. They might sink over time. It's all right. There's going to be plenty of carbon dioxide being formed in here that they shouldn't really be a problem. They float. And next, I'm going to take a reading. Why? Because, well, you know, it's good to know what you're doing, even if you're doing a primitive style brew. It's good to know where you started, where it ended, so you can reproduce it next time so that you know what sweet is sweet, how much alcohol you made, which isn't all that critical. But as we get further into this process, other things will come to surface and you'll know why we had to do this. Being that we know that honey is usually about 0.035 specific gravity, or spagur, based on a pound in a gallon of must, and I know that these bottles are a little bit smaller than that, and we used a pound and a half, that would mean that's roughly 1.050-ish for a starting gravity, as long as I calculated everything right and our honey really was that. Well, in this case, it's going to be 1.058. And you know what? That's okay. I want this to be a lower gravity. 1.060 would have been my absolute max, and I would have watered this down a little bit if it went a little higher. What could have happened to cause that? Well, this isn't a full gallon. I didn't fill it fully, so I have less than a gallon. Concentrated a little bit more. Whatever. This sample that I pulled out to test is going right back in here because everything has been sanitized in. The red bucket of sanitization! And now, I'm going to put a lid on it. It's going to go sit under my desk or on the floor, or wherever I happen to find room, because we have a lot of brews going right now. But a couple of things I want to say. For those of you who are concerned that I didn't wash that rosemary, first, honey is a bit of an antibacterial, anti antiseptic kind of thing. So in the first couple of days before the fermentation actually starts up, that will help prevent any nastiness from forming. And second, as the yeast gets going, there's going to be no oxygen. Therefore, anything that might have been living in there is going to die. Almost all living things need oxygen in some way, except yeast for some reason. But they do still in the beginning, see? Anyway, and third, did I say two reasons? There's three reasons. This is going to get pasteurized eventually. So if there was anything at all that might have been bad in there, we're going to kill it off later on. Don't worry about it. Everything in here is good for the yeast, it's good for the brew, it's going to make things just work that little bit better. One additional note about our rosemary, I grew that rosemary, so I know there's no pesticides or harmful chemicals on the rosemary itself. Yeah, that's important. Whatever rosemary you decide to use, make sure you know where it came from. Grow it yourself if you can. If you buy it in the grocery store, you may have to wash that really, really good. And you want to make sure that you're getting a really high quality raw honey at that point, because I'm hedging my bets here. I know there's going to be some yeast in that rosemary. I'm hoping there's yeast in that honey. I believe there is because we've used it before for wild ferments and it did okay. So I'm just making sure I have a backup plan. If you really get stuck and you absolutely aren't sure and you or you don't want to make this a wild fermentation, you know what? Take a little bread, bread yeast, just a teaspoon or so, dump it in there. If you have wine yeast or any ale yeast or anything, use that too. It doesn't, not too, use that instead. <laughs> it doesn't really make that much difference. I wanted to do it as a wild ferment because a lot of people are saying that they can't get yeast lately. So this makes a nice, easy way to do that. Um, but this is going to sit for probably a couple of weeks and we'll be back with an update. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.